Hey, we're live. Cellular Healing TV, episode 74. One of the uh, special guests we have with us today, but I'm going to have to move because I have some remediation work going on in my home right now. More on that later. Not happy about it, but we're going to learn from it today on Cellular Healing TV. Our special guest today is Amy. What's your last name, Amy? It's Ellison. I couldn't hear because of all the uh, construction going on, so I'm going to go outside. <laughs> okay. And we'll be able to talk about your story. So, Dr. Pomp, this is one of your clients. Oh, we lost you, Warren. Mm -hmm. So that's all right. He he doesn't have internet out oh. there. Yeah, you're gonna have to go upstairs. All right, so we'll move. <laughs> this is a live show. So I'll roll I'll roll downstairs, and you guys start interviewing Amy. Yeah, yeah Amy. Um, I you know I I actually had a, an appointment with you this week, right? And uh, I mean you've been my client for a while now, but. Uh, you know, I, I said, gosh, you, you've got to come on the show because like Warren's going through his remediation, you know, you also found mold and it was tested high for aspergillus, which is a type of toxic mold. It's one of the five bad ones that you don't want to get. And well, so I said, because your story is really unique and I, I kind of want you to start from the beginning and just fill, fill them in. I mean, you have some autoimmune issues going on and some Obviously, some health challenges from fatigue, brain fog, dizziness. I remember, you know, liver enzymes being high when I originally looked at your blood work, and you know. But go ahead and then share about that with you, with us. Okay. So I guess it starts way back when I was young. I always remember being tired as a kid, always exhausted, um, and I started getting headaches when I was probably, probably in junior high. And I started getting really bad migraines, yeah. um, so bad that I um, went to a headache clinic for mm -hmm. a couple weeks at a time. They tried to figure out what it was. Um, it put me on all kinds of different medications, and you know we looked for answers everywhere, but um, did not get much relief. And so um, the only thing that ended up giving me any relief was um, going to the chiropractor, and that was kind of a last resort thing because we were so involved in yeah. the medical medical part of it we didn't yeah. even think about chiropractor right. a chiropractor until somebody suggested it and mm -hmm. so um, when I went it actually gave me relief yeah. and so I ended up going pretty much every day my mom would call him on the weekends and he would come in for a special trip <laughs> because that was about the only thing that gave me relief mm -hmm. so anyways fast forward I'm dealing with these um, migraines and um, I've always had digestion problems Terrible. It'd be from one extreme to the next, and um, everybody would always joke, oh, "Where's Amy? She's in the bathroom." <laughs> you know, it was just a kind of the story of my life. So between that and the headaches and the um, chronic fatigue, um, I would get uh, sinus infections all the time, um, strep throat, you name it. And um, I remember your your brain fog being really bad. I'm oh, kidding. that you know that got worse as it progressed later. Mm -hmm. But it got really bad, and it, actually, it's really bad right now because we're in the middle of treatment. So I hope that <laughs> I hope I'll be okay during the show. Um, no, I'm just joking. Yeah. But anyways, um, so I guess probably the thing that really started me on this path was my legs. Um, I, oh gosh, it's probably about six years ago now. Um, had some dental work done. I've always had a problem with. Um, my mouth as far as cavities, you know, um, pain, all kinds of stuff going on. And as a result, I ended up getting um, root canals and um, it was always something happening with that. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up having to have a bridge put on um, the left side. Right. And, and I didn't realize that this, this at the time until after I started working with you, but I believe it was at that time that everything really started to snowball. Mm -hmm. And um, I was working one day and my coworker looked down and she said, oh my gosh, what is wrong with your feet? And I looked down and my feet were like, they were dark purple. They were very purple and, um, you know, they were cold, but they would go from hot to cold, hot to cold, you know, back and forth. Well, that started to progress and I started to get pain and swelling and it was just really, it looked horrible. Yeah. And honestly, you know, it's kind of funny because here you feel horrible your whole life, but when you see something like that and you know everybody else sees it, it's like all of a sudden that becomes a priority, like, oh, something's wrong. And, you know, my mom even said, you need to go get that checked out because that could be heart problems or, you know, something like that. So anyways, I went to the doctor and he said, I showed him my legs and they were like 
purple and swollen and at the worst. And he said, oh, how old are you? And I said, oh, I was 42 at the time. And he said, well, you are getting older. Oh. And he said, yeah. He said, let's give you some water pills for the retention. Yeah. And how about some Ted stockings? You know, yeah. go ahead and put those on and work in those. And um, we'll see if that helps. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I said, you know, I think there's something more than that going on. I said, I would really feel you know, better going to like a vein specialist or somewhere where they can at least check out my legs a little more thoroughly. Mm -hmm. So he did agree to that. And I went there and once again, my legs were horrible at the time, but she did the whole ultrasound, the whole in-depth thing and said, you're fine. Mm -hmm. She said, but obviously I can see you have something going on because I can, you know, you're sitting here and your legs look like you just died is what she said. I mean, they were that blue and, you know, swollen and everything. And so, um, she said, let me do a little investigating and I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. Well, then she called me back and said, you know, I think you have an autoimmune disease. And, you know, the name is so long, I can't even pronounce it to this day. <laughs> but basically. Yeah, the erythromyalgia. Thank um, you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was through that that I actually stumbled upon your website. Because I'm like, okay, I have this. She's telling me I'm going to have it for my whole life. I'm going to be in pain. My legs are going to look like this, and I just didn't want to settle for that. Yeah. And so, excuse me, my mouth is quite dry. Well, you know, the uh, you. I think you read autoimmune answer. It was the article that I wrote mm -hmm. about what you know the cause of autoimmune and also the solution, how it's compared to a three-legged stool. And you know, one of the things is stressors. That's one leg turns on a gene, and obviously you know, certain symptoms start. And then the gut plays a very important role in autoimmune. So yeah. those three legs are a component, to the, you know, of a cause of autoimmune. And, you know, modern medicine doesn't address it. And, of course, it was very clear. Matter of fact, it was when you got the bridge, you had an amalgam filling right underneath the bridge. So you have metal near metal, which is galvanism. Yes. Which yes. I think one dentist eventually told you, you know, this is, a, you know, at least I told you that's galvanism. And, mm -hmm. and, and shortly after that, that's when all of these problems kind of, you know, went overflow, right? I mean, that's when things got worse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it was when I, um, actually, I was Googling heavy metal, like, um, it was all along those lines, and I stumbled upon the video that you and Warren had done together. And it was actually Warren telling his story yeah. about how he gets, got sick. And when you guys were telling your story back and forth, I was in tears. I mm -hmm. thought, oh, my gosh, like, this is what I have. I know it is, you know, because you, you look and you look and you go to all these different doctors and nobody gives you a clue, and they just have you going in this vicious cycle you know, all these different um, prescriptions, and then you have all these side effects. And, uh, and I remember you talking about, you know, if God made our bodies to be able to heal. And I'm like, exactly. Like, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I remember Warren saying, you know, I'm a Christian, and I don't even feel like I can pray. And I was right there. I was so exhausted. I was so overwhelmed, and I didn't know, you know, and I just was like, finally, somebody who can understand what I'm feeling and gives me validation, you know. And then so I started looking and, you know, really digging into everything. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this has got yeah. to be the answer. Not, and then when you, um, the three-legged stool analogy, when I read that, I was like, I have to work for this doctor. <laughs> like, I, I just hadn't come across anything like that before. You know, and, and I think the most important component there is, is that we knew that you had some stressors upstream, right? At that time, it was evident with your mouth. We got a heavy metal test back. You had high lead, high mercury, which is a synergy, very, very nasty. Mm -hmm. However, we had, we thought that there was still something else going on. Yes. <laughs> and, I, and I always say that once sensitive to one neurotoxin, so you accumulated metals over here, you become sensitive to many. And we're not sure exactly how long you know the mold has been in your home. But we suspected it. And I don't even remember, you can remind me of why we suspected there might be mold in your home. And I know your, your kids were also having some challenges, mm -hmm. um, which is always a, a, you know, a, a red flag to me. But I asked you some pointed questions. And I remember in my day one that I said, you got to get your home tested. And then I think you had someone come in and they said, okay, we found some ash village, but it's not that bad. Exactly. And, then, and then something said to me, uh, uh, I don't know about that. So to kind of tell that part, because it brings us to what's going on now in your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. So, and hopefully not in mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, the timing is ironic, exactly. Um, it was my daughter, actually. Um, she's 19 years old in her senior year, and she's always had digestion problems as well. And I just thought, like, mother like daughter, you know, runs in, runs in the family. Little did I know about uh, everything, you know, um, as far as the epigenetics and everything. It just amazed me. But anyways, it was her, and I just thought, okay, something's going on here because you had asked me that question, and then she started getting worse. Yeah. And she's like, Mom, she's like, something's wrong. I feel depressed. She said, I'm not, you know, I'm not fearful of doing anything, but I don't feel right. And, you know, when she was exhausted, she ended up getting mono and all kinds of things. And it's like, okay, something's going on. And so it was really um, when I back up the boat, I think about um, when we first spoke, you had me take that um, visual contrast test, too. Mm -hmm. And that was when that kind of made a light bulb go off in my head because I pretty much bombed that. Yeah, yeah. And, um, for just for those reminding me, I spoke about it last week. The visual contrast it's called a VCS test. I think you just took it online, right? I mean, it was the. I did a Dr. Yeah, Dr. Schubert's Schubert's website, uh -huh. I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, it's like, you know, ten dollar test, and uh, you take it online and you failed it. Yeah, so that was a that was a big red flag, obviously. Mm -hmm. That uh, when you fail that test, typically it is in fact a biotoxin. And it's typically either from mold or lime, in this case, mold. And so um, that got you to test your house. Another red flag, too, Amy, I, I remember you telling me that your basement always got wet. Or not always, but it did. And, and I always say where there's water, there's mold. So that was one red flag. But you also suspected the bathroom for some reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, um, our basement, there there is a crack in the foundation. And it's not very often, but when we get a heavy rain, there's a little puddle of water, and um, it's happened periodically throughout the throughout the years, you know, and um, and then as when we were kids, actually my husband and I purchased purchased this home from my mom and moved back in this home, and right. they built it. But um, they had a sink, um, like a laundry sink, and every once in a while, you know, one of the kids would pull out the cord or something. Well, then all the water would go all over the basement, you know, and we cleaned it up and everything, you know, for what we thought was very well, but you know. How, how many times that happened throughout our lives. I don't know. And yeah. so, you know, definitely there was dampness in the basement. And yeah. to be honest, we didn't even have a dehumidifier down there. Right. We didn't, I mean, we were clueless. So, you know, we didn't even have one of those prior to talking we're, to you. We're, we're, we're going to talk about uh, here in a moment how to, you know, how to make your home safe. And, you know, and that's, that's one of the things that, you know, you two are both working on right now. So, okay, so fa fast forward, you have it tested. Then something crazy happened as well. Um, with uh, your husband's glasses in the sink. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to say this really respectfully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's a great guy, and he can laugh. So we all just <laughs> laughed in our stress. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was of all nights, my daughter's graduation night. And, of course, we're running around, you know, trying to be, you know, on time and everything, and he gets home from work late, and he's a painter. He owns his own painting business, and he had paint on his glasses, and so I'm always saying, clean up your glasses. So he put him in the sink, and he was going to jump in the shower, and we were running behind, as usual, and um, and he he forgot to turn the water off. <laughs> and so the whole time that he was in the shower, the water was coming down off the countertop, you know, on the bathroom floor, and all of a sudden he turns off the shower, and I hear him say, Oh my gosh! <laughs> and so I went in. Yeah, I ran in there. I said, "What's wrong?" And he's like, "I left the water on." He's like, "I don't know what I was thinking." So I ran downstairs, and the water's coming down underneath the floor, oh my all gosh. in the bathroom. Yeah, and we had to be at a graduation. And I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" I mean, talk about fear. I knew we already had mold, and then this just was like ignited everything in my mind, you know. So. Oh, my gosh. And my mom called saying, you know, when are you going to be at the graduation? I said, you know what? You're going to have to get there, save the seats, and we'll slide in at 659. <laughs> well, anyway, so, but yeah. that got you to do some mold testing. And then you, you had another test. I, I have the test here to my right. Um, and then I looked at it and immediately saw, you know, very high levels of aspergillus yeah. um, is, is a toxic mold. So. You know, just uh, just to bring it together. So we find two sources. We find uh, galvanism. By the way, galvanism is when you have opposing metals that cause a battery effect in the mouth, and it causes the mercury just to pour out of those fillings, right? And it's it's very people that have galvanism. I mean, it, it's inevitable that problems start. You can't have two opposing metals in the same mouth, 
it doesn't work, especially when you have a silver filling. Recipe for disaster. Problem number one. Um, and that was evident because certain symptoms started. But, you know, typically I always say it's more than one stressor. It's the perfect storm. Emotional, chemical, physical, or too chemical and emotional. Well, your other one was the mold. So here you are. You know, okay, we, we narrow it in um, to these stressors. And the problem is now, and this is, you know, part of the story I do want you to share. You know, this is going to cost a lot of money to get the, the mouth done. Um, you know, you're, you're willing to do whatever it takes. And then the house. You know, we, you, we shared some emails back and forth. Should we move? What should we do? Um, and through prayer, I think in both of our hearts, we thought, you know, let's, let's fix the problem, uh, which we'll talk more about today. However, you know, where was the money going to come from? So tell that part of the story because I think that's amazing. Yeah, um, a couple different pieces to that because, um, you know, initially we were so focused on the mercury. And, yeah, obviously, you know, dental insurance is not the norm and you have to go to a biological dentist, you know, to get this done properly. And so that's, you know, there's no insurance for that. So after he worked up the plan, I just thought there's no way. And um, I was pretty defeated. And actually my mom... Um, Oh, I'm very grateful. Said to me, you know, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you that money, and we'll worry about it later. If you can't pay for it, you know, we're gonna worry about that later. She said because if, if you had cancer and you were, you know, dying, I would do anything for you. So, so why would I not do this now? Right. And, you That's know, a good way to think about it. Yeah. Why not get to the cause, right? Yes, yes. It was just amazing. And she, and you know, I said, Mom, I can't do that. You know, oh my gosh. You know, they're getting older, thinking about retiring and everything. And she's like, Amy. She goes, this is also a walk of faith for me. And the Lord just laid it on my heart that I need to trust him while I'm doing this for you. And you're my family. You know, and that's what we, you know, in the Bible, that's, you know, you are to care for your family, you know. And so that was the first part of it. The second part of it, so, you know, we're able to do that. And I'm so grateful. And then we come to this mold thing. And it's like, oh, my gosh, I, you know, obviously can't go to my mom for this amount of money again. And it's so much money to be able to stay here. But yet at the same time, to have to go to another place, you know, an apartment, wherever it may be, well, then you don't know what you're walking into. It could be worse. And you have no control. And so, you know, after talking to my mom is my go-to person, <laughs> um, back and forth and everything, you know, she, she said to me, she said, Amy, I think you need to get all the estimates done. And she said, and just take all the estimates and the amount and the, the huge... <laughs> the hugeness of the situation and um, bring it to the Lord in prayer and let's um, go to the elders in prayer every um, the first of the month at my church they get together and they pray um, you know people come and pray with the elders so that's what I did and um, it was an awesome time of prayer I had my family and friends come and support me and then I um, I left just um, with a peace in my heart and I had had another just a just a moment with the Lord prior to that where I, I was completely convinced we were going to leave 100%. Like I'm, I was I'm scared of this home, honestly. And um, I felt like the Lord was saying, no, you're going to stay. You're going to stay. You're going to trust me. And I was like, okay, Lord, <laughs> I do trust you. I'm scared to death, but, you know, help me with my unbelief is, you know, right. what my prayer was. And um, he just gave me a peace in my heart. And then so um, we prayed with the elders, and then it was a couple days later I got a call and um, from a lady at church, and she said, you know, once a month um, when they have that prayer time that uh, one of the deacons from the church comes and he sits in on, you know, some of the prayer time. And it's just kind of randomly. Well, he still happened to be in mine that time. And, um, and she said, they, he went back to the other deacons in the church and said, you know, this is her story and the whole big story and um, wanted to be able to help us. Yeah. And so she said, you know, they're going to be contacting you to let you know how they can help you. And um, it was amazing, yeah. just amazing. And I just was completely overwhelmed of the faithfulness of the Lord. Yeah, you and, know. Uh, yeah. I, I just I just so wanted you to share that because, you know, I, I work with so many people and I have so many people right now and I always say, you know, just trust, it'll come. You know, it's like you know, God knows these are the things that are interfering with your body healing. If you remove the interference, the body does heal. That was the very thing that you hung on to, you know, and, and he'll provide. And, and he just seeing that he provided here 
and now he's providing for your remediation. You know, and, and, and that's, uh, I want people to have that hope. And here's, yeah. the thing. you know, look, you know, so you found a remediation company, and, and I, I want to end with this and then move on to what Warren has going on, but, um, you know, oftentimes it's hard to find the right one. But uh, these people said they're going to come in and describe the process that they said that they're going to need to do to remediate your home and make it safe. And when I heard that, then I, I knew that, okay, we're, we're heading in the right direction. So mm -hmm. kind of describe what they told you that they're going to do. Yeah, so that's another thing I was very frightened of. I thought, okay, this is one of the churches willing to help with this. Um, what if they don't follow the right protocol, you know? No. Oh, that, was my, that was my biggest concern, frankly. Oh, yeah, yeah. And trust me, I have turned into like a a, a geek as far as studying about all this stuff, you know, and everything. But um, so I had in my mind, you know, oh, my gosh. And once again, the Lord said, you know what? If this doesn't work out, you know, I've gone before you and there's something else ahead. And so anyways, but they came in. It was a builder and another gentleman from uh, Mold Remediation. And Oh my goodness, everything they said was spot on. Um, first of all, we have to take everything out of the home. We have to throw away all the porous material because, you know, there's no way to be able to clean that safely. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get rid of, you know, the couches, the mattresses, all that kind of stuff. Um, we're going to take the hard surfaces we can keep, but we have to clean them very thoroughly a specific way. Right. Um, you know, and then we're going to basically, a lot of things have to be, um, the drywall has to be taken down, the bathroom's completely good up the bathroom at this point, um, go in and safely just clean everything, the attic, that's another thing, the first mold remediation um, company that came out here just said, you don't need to worry about the attic because you don't breathe that air, you know, that's not air that you breathe, it's the, you know, the main area that you're, you're concerned with. Well, we had a leak in the attic as well as the bathroom, so our attic has mold in it and everything too, so they have to go in there and redo that, you know, clean that thoroughly as well. Yeah, and they, they set up, they explain how they're going to set up negative air pressure. Yes, and yes. Suck the air out, and we'll see that because that's going on in Warren's house. So, you know, I mean, the, the takeaway is is that, you know, for you to stay in that house, it has to be done right. It's not someone in spraying chemical, you know, on some mold and putting some uh, new floor in, you know. It, right. It's not so simple, right? Right. And so you found a good company. I mm -hmm. can tell by the way they're saying get rid of porous things and, you know, obviously, you know, they're going to clean every hard surface, everything hard. That's what it takes once you get to the level of sickness where you're at to stay in a home. Mm -hmm. Leviticus 14 in the Bible talks about going through this cleaning process, you know, and then if that doesn't work, then basically get out of the home and get rid of everything and don't bring it with you. That's the level of toxicity we're talking about with a biotoxin. I mean, this stuff ruins lives. And last mm -hmm. week we talked about that from a health perspective. You know, this week we're talking about how to make a home safe, you know, and it's like, and, and that's what we're, we're making this safe in you, and we're making your home safe, you know, and already you've had some breakthroughs in your health, you know, just by getting your cells working and, you know, opening up some of the detox pathways, but, you know, Amy, I'd said until we get rid of these sources, you know, we're never going to shut down that autoimmune, you know, and, uh, and, and anyways, I, I just so want, wanted you to share that story because, you know, you didn't have the resources, you know, you trusted God, He provided, you know, and getting rid of the big sources of stress, you know, that, that's the key. And uh, so anyways, I, I want to thank you for being with us, and is there anything else you wanted to share before I, I let you go here? You know, I just have to tell you that you are the biggest blessing of all, and I remember praying when I was so sick and didn't think there was any hope, and Lo and behold, there was your YouTube video. And, you know, as funny as it is, technology is such a blessing. Yeah. And uh, to be able to work with you has been amazing and hear your story and the fact that you, you know, from pain came purpose. And I just want to thank you and your family for enduring all the hardship because I know, <laughs> I know your families go through a lot of pain and stress too. So, yeah, I just want to um, say thank you. And, thank and you. to God be the glory. That's right. You know, I remember sharing with you in a really hard time, you know, in your walk. Um, Rock Kazaka Mots. Do you remember yes, that? Yes, I certainly you know, do. <laughs> I always say the English translation, <clears throat> and that doesn't do it justice. It means be strong and courageous, but really in the Hebrew, it means God has already went before you, and he's figured out a way. He's fought the battle. You know, God, every time somebody was moving into a promise in their life, you know, God sent 
somebody to speak those words, Rock Kazaka Matson. Moses spoke those words on his deathbed to Israel as they were moving into their promise against 31 enemies, and they were only focused on, you know, what was right before them and their circumstances, ready to turn around in fear. And how many of us face that, right? Absolutely. And I, okay, you have to watch this video from Eric Ludy. It was a, actually a commencement speech, and he spoke Rock Kazaka Matz and what that really means. And you know, I, I I remember speaking that to you. So I say it again, yeah. Rock Kazaka Matz, and we're seeing that, right? He already went before you. He had a plan. Exactly. And, and he's making your home safe, you know, and he's making your body safe. So so yeah. thank thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for sharing that story. And that serves us perfectly for what we're going to talk about, and that's how to make a home safe, like your ha your, what's going on in your home. So, so Warren, I'm going to turn it back over to you and say goodbye to Amy, and uh, let's, uh, let's start talking about making homes safe. So thanks, Amy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Amy, do you, want to, do you want to stay on? Sure, I would love to. Listen? Okay. Sure. Why, don't, why doesn't she listen? She's inspired me today because I've been living in <laughs> crazy fear myself over a little bit of water, and I'm not sure if, well... There may be a little mold. We're going to find out here. Um, maybe I can ask the guys when I go up. They were crunching out very well. We're, we're talking about a wee little wa bit of water, and we said that last week, right, right in the home. Uh, and Amy obviously had years of water, so, you know, we're talking about a yep, massive yep. remediation. But I was still fearful of that, you know. I mean, uh, and she had rock kazak amats for her, her problem. I barely have rock kazak amats, rock kazak amats <laughs> for my little, my little water leak because I'm nervous, man. You know, I'm going to... I rent this home. I'm going to buy it. That's, I have a brand new um, infant. I know too much. And the neat thing that you said, Amy, is you found a remediation company that understands biotoxins. I want you to say, I want you to know, everyone listening, it took two plumbers, a drywaller, um, one mold remediation guy, and another mold remediation guy, and no one could find the, the, the source of the leak. We still can't find it. Didn't say it was much water. I'm the one that stuck my head up in the ceiling because of Dan and Phil being there, making me think, well, maybe there is, to find, yeah, Dr. Pompa, more wa water damage, so we had to be more persistent. Otherwise, everyone wanted to seal it up. They pressure you. They say that you're nuts, mm -hmm. and they don't understand biotox. Oh, a little bit of mold, a little bit of water damage, no big deal, but they don't understand biotox. And th that company that understands biotox, and that's like one in probably 100 remediation companies that would even understand that, if that, because these are all franchises, right? A lot of them, mm -hmm. Serve Pro, Firedex, you know, and they're all franchises. And in that franchising, they're just about turnover and volume and money. That's it, period. In, they're out, it's over. You know, they, they proselytize these people and insurance companies for fire and water damage, and they don't care about the biotoxins. Some of them will deny their existence. You know, so that you found a company like that is a blessing, a massive blessing. And, um, you know, the, the guys upstairs don't even understand that, but I do. I mean, I helped... I'm up there sealing the thing when they're blowing the air out. I sealed up the window. Like, I'm doing all this extra stuff because I do have fear, you know, and you've given me faith to know, you know, God's going to work this out. He did it for you. He did it for me, and he's going to do it for the people listening, and that's one of the biggest parts. Yeah, we're outspoken, not outspoken, but we're, we're honest with our faith, and without our faith, man, I would have shot myself, you know. I was so sick. So for those who criticize people of faith and you shouldn't talk about that as part of healing, shame on you, you know. Shame on you. You know, I would I would – Listen to what you believe that inspires you to move on and helps you get over the hump. So, man, we're going to preach that every day, all day, because it has inspired me. It has inspired you. It's transformed my life, and that's the biggest takeaway of the day. But let's get on to some making your home safe. Dr. Pomp, I have a lot of great examples for you guys. My Internet's working better. As you can see, I do functional workouts. See that? There's my rope. There's my heavy bag, and there's my messy garage. Don't look at that. I'm in a, I'm in a massive transition right now. There's a couple things here that I want to show you. Um, right here what we have in this box is an air exchanger. What this does in homes is brings fresh air in and sucks stale air out. It's called the perfect open window. Let me open this up for you. You can install these in your home. It won't fit in mine because it's too, too big. But let me see here if I can but, open this up. Uh, what we have above that... The other nice thing about that, Warren, if you can hear me, is um, we can also, and I spoke a little bit about this last week, for people who are chemically sensitive, these units can pressurize the home. So we can bring right. more air. Get there. Okay, I'll, but he'll show it. We can bring in more air than we're yeah. bringing out, and then we can create positive pressure. So that attic air 
in that wall air doesn't come in and bring formaldehyde and biotoxins into our home. So go ahead and show that, Warren. This is huge. It looks like what's happening. Are they leaving? They're my people in my home upstairs. I'm going to have to run up there in a minute and see what's going on. Let's get an inspection. But anyway, this has a membrane. I don't know if you can see that a little bit, that white right next to the galvanized steel. Um, it's kind of hard to see. This is a membrane where it moves the air through. Mm -hmm. um, that takes the humi humidity out, exchanges it, blows fresh air in, pressurizing your home. You can adjust these. There's two big fans over here. You can adjust those to pressurize your home and bring in that fresh air so the air pushes out against your walls at a slight pressure and that keeps the set of the air from the walls moving into your home. It pushes everything out kind of like blowing up a balloon. You put a pin in it and it goes kind of like the negative air that we're going to look at upstairs. So you can get, um, this is a Renew Air, this is a good one, Honey Melt. You have to, if you're in a humid place, you got to make sure you have the right type of membrane. This is um, a Renew Air, R-E-N-E-W right. so Air, so that's a good thing. And then there's also, you can get small um, little, this is a little uh, um, dehumidifier, um, inline dehumidifier. So, but let me run upstairs to see what's going on with my remote remediation. And I want you to show oh, them how they, Warren, I want you to show how they create the negative air pressure where they're remediating so that that air is not shared with the home air and making things worse. See, when you open up one of these walls, uh, when Amy opens up her floor or Warren opens up a ceiling, you know, people do it all the time, but the problem is then the biotoxins from the mold, you know, get the massive dose right Okay, we here. have a, they have a question for me here, so, all right, fellas, what's the question? You don't have to be on TV if you don't want to, so, you're not on TV, so, what's going on? Okay. Right. Okay. What'd you find? Is there mold? Very little. They found some mold. But little. <laughs> and a little Warren, bit of mold. Get a tape sample of it. Warren, get a tape sample. There's an air gap. So took the insulation off and sprayed up in there. So where do you think the water's coming from? From up above somewhere? I mean it has to be. We're on the top. So was this was this insulation full of black mold? No. No. So there's only a little bit of mold growing on let me show the picture, put it here. We found a little bit of black mold. See that? Yeah, barely. It's too everyone, th everyone thought we were nuts. Every, oh, no, every no, no, no. homeowner, the mold guys, except yeah. for this guy over here. I don't want to say his name, but you know, can say their name. Can I say the name of your company? Restore it. Restore it. Good company if you're from Pennsylvania. Great guy. Great team. So, Warren. So, a little, little bit of mold in the, in the corner there as well. I, I want it tested. I want to get a tape sample. Okay, can we get a tape sample of that? Get Dan Howard to come in and get a tape sample? You already, already sprayed it. I've already sprayed it. Well, you still be able to figure out what it is. <laughs> yeah. No, we can still figure it out. It looks, it's black, so it's probably stacky. Yeah, white is usually right. aspergillus, I think, and clostridium, and I think it's white. I don't know. What? It's unknown about what it is. Yeah, it's unknown, so it doesn't matter. But, um... Okay, so I have it open. If you want to put your respirator on. I sprayed it. Mm -hmm. the, the staining is still there, but I shot it and, and it's controlled. So if you want to put your respirator on, go in there, take a look. So what are, what are the next steps? The next step is to uh, find out where that water's coming from before we shut this down. And is it was it actively wet? The plastic that you see to the left there, folks, that's its containment. And that's creating um, the, the, the pressure, the negative pressure, so that air doesn't mix yeah, with and I'll, I'll explain that in a second. But what they're saying to me now is just like with you. There's a, there's a source of water, and that source needs to be removed. Before they sh shut this thing down, call it, call it good, we need to find the source of the leak. Um, without removing the source of the water this problem is going to come back. So they shot it, killed the mold, 
It's a very small amount, right, Dr. Pompa? I mean, that's a tiny amount. Unless you think there's any more than that, maybe above it there could be some. Oh, you did. Okay, yeah. Okay, can you see the bathtub up above it? No, so maybe there's water that's going down to the bathtub, but we'll get into that um, well, here in a minute. But they have to remove the water source; they're not going to do it. This was a leak, Amy. Just he had he had someone come in because the paint on his ceiling was kind of separating, and he said, you know, he just wants that fixed before he closes on the house, right? So the guy went up to fix that little crack. So they didn't know there was water, and he said, oh, that's moist. And he was just going to, you know, seal it over. And Warren's like, no, 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 no. What do you mean it's moist? <laughs> so, you know, of course, right. he cut it all out, realizing, oh, yeah, this was getting wet. And, of course, you know, oh, it's not too bad. They were going to seal it up. And, you know, Warren's like, no, no, we have to find the water. I mean, three times they wanted to seal this thing up, and Warren insisted they couldn't find the leak. Finally, days, they find the leak. I happened to be at his house when this was all going on last week's show. And, of course, then they were like, okay, it's fine. We don't see any mold. And so I'm like, you know, with Warren, I'm like, Dude, there's still maybe mold back there. You better, you know, then Warren felt it. We felt, you know, we like the sense that it could have been something. You know, what if it's back there? We start what ifing. And so Warren finally, out of paranoia, because that's what we do, he <laughs> yep. his head way up in there. No, he didn't even get his head back. He took a picture. And we both looked at it, and I said, I see black. And... So, sure enough, then he got his head up there, and, you know, of course, he put a mask on and all, but, you know, he got his head up there, and then we, he saw, you know, that there was, in fact, mold. Yeah, which led to what folks don't know about me, about me is I, I clean up hazardous waste for a living, so I can put on PPE, personal protective equipment. I train people on how to not get toxified from a toxic environment, so that's what I did before this. That's what got me sick. So what we have here is a negative air chamber. You can see from here, this is being sucked in. So what's going on is there's a air exchanger in here that's sucking air, and that's pulling this plastic in, like you're sucking on the balloon, and except there's this to keep the balloon, these poles, from keeping that balloon still from compressing and sucking all the way in. So it's negative air. It's sucking in, not pushing out like we want on our home. When we use that air exchanger, that pushes out like a balloon. This sucks in. Um, and then they run this tube, the blower, so that blower sucking, sucking air, kind of like the guys um, that uh, you see when they're trying to sell like carpet sales and stuff, the guy that goes flippy floppy in the air. Well, that's a tube that's blowing that air outside, so all the toxins or biotoxins that are there blowing it outside, as you can see, there it goes, restore it. Um, and then that creates a negative pressure. So that air scrubber, thank God we did it this way, right? You know, that's the negative air unit. They've gone work, did work up inside of my ceiling, cut some holes, cut some holes in, in my wall back there, found the mold, and now i got to call the owner before I close on the, on the building, and that's another major stressor that i got to rock Kazaka Mots for. <laughs> so that's this. Um, so pray for me. Everyone watching, pray for me today because... This is probably a week of lost time so and, and yeah. stress and um, everyone thinking that we're nuts, right? Oh, yes. But we're not nuts. You, those that are watching and have health problems, you're not nuts. What did Amy say? I wanted someone who understood. You know, we understand. You yeah. know, and you're not nuts. You're, you're, you're smart. God's, listen to your gut, guys. God and puts something in your heart, that gut, um, then you know. People don't understand that that small amount of mold that was just found in Warren's home, once somebody is sensitized, even from another stressor, Amy, like this, right? You had the galvanism, the mercury, high lead and mercury levels. You know, once sensitive to one neurotoxin, you become sensitive to all. That amount that's in his home, although it may seem small, and if you're very, very healthy and not challenged, you, might, you can deal with it. Right. But if you're not, that amount of mold will keep you sick. And I say this all the time. Warren hears me tell my, the doctors that I train. If somebody's not progressing in their health, getting well, that means there's still a stressor that's upstream. And so many times it's somebody's home. Whether it's a home that's under positive pressure where it's bringing in formaldehyde from you know, insulation and all that attic wall air, which I talked about walking in Phil's house last week that he was not getting well. And I sniffed and I said, attic, get out. 
you know, and then as soon as he left the home, he starts getting better, you know, and, and that's my, obviously my concern for you, Amy, is, you know, you have to have a safe environment. Our number one, folks, you have to remove the sources from our life, bridges with fillings and metal, galvanism, root canals. Root canals are toxic. You're getting that out. Toxic oh. homes. We have to make our homes safe. And, you know, again, if there's water, there's mold. You know, that leak right there, you know, most people would have just covered it up and they didn't end up in a massive amplified mold. And if you're already challenged, that amount of mold is going to make you sick. I hope that's the message. Warren, you seem like you want to show something else. I do. And i got to wrap it up and go figure it out with these guys. But there's a couple other things that are really important when making your home safe. The coil, which is sitting right in here um, in your air conditioner, yeah. it gets wet. It collects dust, even if you have a really good uh, filter. And I have a good HEPA, you know, a good, you know, not a HEPA, but like a MERV 11 um, filter or a MERV 7. You kind of want to play with that because of airflow. Um, so two things you got to learn to make your home safe. You can buy one of these Sanu boxes or, or different types of UV. This one puts out a little bit of a hydroxyl, like a oxygenating hydrogen molecule. So Sanu box is a really good one. It's called the Saber Saber Genius Genius um, San S A N U V U V Ox. So San for UV. It's a UV light. Ox oxygen. So that's a great name. Um, so it puts out oxygen re reactive oxygen particles that kill the mold on the coil. Okay, um, I noticed my air conditioning wasn't wasn't great, um, and I had them look. I think there might be a leak. Uh, there was a leak in here, so another being anal worn thing worked out. Um, just as a side note, and I also put in through the plenum of the air return. This is the air return coming back in. The air flows. You can see it air flows back through here through my filter, and then into here gets cooled off and gets blasted into the house. The UV keeps the coil from getting. Um, moldy and this actually is an air scrubber, an air purifier that puts out hydroxyl groups, UV light, so it kills mold spores. So good thing I had this in here, you know, because um, it, it's, you know, nullifying a lot of this uh, um, toxic air I may have had. Besides the biotoxins, this isn't going to handle a biotoxin. This filter won't handle a biotoxin. It'll kill the mold spores, um, but it won't handle the biotoxin yeah, where we, we yeah, discussed earlier. So, uh, uh, put that little bit of mold it gives off spores. That's what it does. And it gets in the airspace. And then that's picked up by our HVAC. And what is in those units? Dust, right? They lay in the, uh, in the dust in those units. And then they, they plant. And they come in there. And then what happens is they grow. And now you have mold growing in your HVAC system. Mm -hmm. And all of the, you know, um, the duct work now is growing mold. It's growing mold on the coil. And now your air that you breathe 24-7, even though your house doesn't have a lot of mold, now your system has mold. And so you and your family are breathing biotoxins produced by a little mold that got somewhere else that got in that HVAC. So those things that Warren has there, they kill the spore so they're not able to grow in the system. So it doesn't get rid of the biotoxin, but it kills the spore that will produce the biotoxin so you don't grow mold in the system. So... All right. One last thing I want to share with you guys is if you can see up here, see that gutter run? And then if you look up, you'll see there's gutters up there. Mm -hmm. If your gutters get clogged or if that run gets clogged or if down below properly draining away from your house and that water either is not going down into the, the drain. We're losing you a little bit. But, and move away from your house. Yeah, so just be careful, and, and if you have the gutter runs, that they're not the water's not overflowing and putting water into your attic because gutters get clogged. Um, not a big fan of gutter shields. Just clean your gutters, you know, once a year. And then also, if the gutter that's running down the side, you're breaking up, dumping water. Let me go over here. Well, if the, the, if the drain is if the drain is dumping water, sorry, um, next to your home and water isn't draining away from your home, that's mm -hmm. another way to get water into your basement. Major problem in making your home safe. So clean your gutters so they don't overflow and put water damage in your in your seal. I mean, in your attic. Two, make sure when the water is flowing down the downspouts coming from your gutter are clean and actually going into the ground, not just into the ground, but into a pipe that runs into a sewer. If you're 
in a condo or away from your home and you know shooting off into a stream or however your home is, make sure that water is not staying next to your house. You always want moisture away from your home. Yeah. So if you live on a slope and your house is intersects that slope, good luck because that water is always going to flow in your basement. It's positive water pressure. We talked about positive air pressure, but when I see slopes going into homes, it's just a matter of time before that basement gives away. Trust me, you can't stop it. So you always want things sloping away from your home when homes are built right. Uh, you know, make sure hills are further away. You know, so otherwise you're going to have to dig some type of major, you know, canal. I mean, it's very difficult to stop that water. But the gutters are very important, and uh, you know, just making sure that water is flowing away from the home uh, and not down the home, down that foundation, and putting pressure because eventually the water will find a crack or create a crack. It will come in. If the water goes through block. I remember um, one of the contractors, I think it was our friend Frank, uh, said, man, you can spit on the side of a cinder block and it'll go through the other side. <laughs> they just literally act as a sponge. You know, and, and that's where a lot of mold comes in. Is just people, their, their basement, you know, they're not taking care of the water that's you know, coming into their foundation and it absorbs into the, uh, the cinder block. And most of the time you don't see that water. Uh, it's just behind the wall and behind the cinder block and there's mold. So, bad news. All right. All right. Well, you have it's to go. I'm going to say a few things to sign us off here. But, um, Amy, I want to thank you for joining us. And I, I hope you got some ideas, Amy, on yeah. things you need to do even once your home's remediated, right? Yes, you yes. Know, making sure that it's positively pressurized, making sure that those things are in your unit, uh, you know, just to keep any mold down and, you know, your air clean. Listen, the air we breathe is so important. The way we're building homes today is very dangerous and risky because drywall is the perfect food for mold. All we have to do is add water. That's it. That's paper. And paper is cellulose, and cellulose is the exact food what mold eats. It's like if you have grizzly bears, you know, and you live in the mountains, and you're putting raw meat outside. I mean, literally. I mean, you know, you're, you know, by chance, you know, obviously grizzly bears are going to eventually show up. You know, if you wet drywall, mold shows up. It's in the air. So, you know, we have to understand that. You know, the way that they, homes used to be built in buildings was completely different. You know, they didn't put paper or drywall. So I don't know when that's going to change, and there is a movement to change some of that. And, of course, we're sealing homes. You see that stuff when they're building a new home, that, that plastic they put around it, Tyvek? Well, it seems like a really good idea because that seals it, keeps the water out. That's the solution, but there's a problem there. It keeps the chemicals in. So we're living in these chemical little bombs, airtight, you know, and it keeps moisture in when we don't have the proper dehumidification. So moisture is not going out, and it keeps chemicals in. So therefore, we have to bring these units, like Warren showed, they're called ERV units, you know, air, air ventilator um, exchangers and it brings the good air and the bad air out. Because we're building homes so tight, those types of units are very important. If you live in certain places of the country, I'm a firm believer, and I had them when I lived out east, um, I had the dehumidifiers um, in all of my homes, you know, just dehumidifying that house. If your humidity is over 50, you have the potential of forming mold. If it's over 60, you're forming mold. It's moisture in the air, the spores, find their way and they just implant in a little bit of dust. We add moisture from the air and we have mold growing. That's why when you walk in basements, things like that, you smell that musty smell. That's mold growing most likely from humidity. So, you know, making the home is our number one. We have to make our home safe. And if you're out there and you're still challenged with some health issues, I always say look to the mouth and look to your home. That's the first places that we go. Uh, infection is another one. I just released an article, folks. I think it's out today, maybe Monday, I'm not sure. But um, it's True Cellular Detox. And in the article, I talk about the three amigos that make most people sick. Heavy metals, biotoxins from mold that we discussed the last two weeks, and infections, root canals, cavitations, and Lyme disease. Those are the three amigos that typically shut down most people's detox pathways and now they start reacting to the world. They become sensitive to every chemical. Their detox pathways shut down, and now they, every cell in their body, including their brain, 
is toxic. And then we start with the brain fog, the fatigue, the anxiety, the sleeplessness, all the hormone challenges, weight gain that doesn't stop, you know, regardless of what you eat. So, folks, I hope that's a lesson. Read that article because most people do detox wrong. Most people do not go upstream. Remove the causes from their life and the sources from their body correctly. In that article, I talk about all that in depth. So, True Cellular Detox article, read it. Watch last week's show and the week before on Lyme disease if you haven't. So between that article and these shows, you're going to be equipped to truly detox your life and your cells. So Amy, thanks again for joining us and signing off, and we'll see you next week.